Vice President Kamala Harris has tested positive for COVID-19. Her press secretary says the 57-year-old tested positive on rapid and PCR tests and is now isolating. She is fully vaccinated and boosted and not exhibiting any symptoms. The White House says the VP has not had any recent close contact with President Biden or the First Lady. Meanwhile, the White House is taking steps to make a COVID antiviral drug available to more Americans. The pill has been shown to reduce the risk of hospitalization and death by about 90 percent. Well, Lange has the latest. Paxlovid is one of the most effective antiviral tools for treating COVID. If only more people could get their hands on it. Over the last few months, the administration has worked very hard with Pfizer to increase the supply of Paxlovid and acquire uh, more and more doses for the American people. Until recently, it was hard to find, but with production up, the Biden administration today announced it wants to make Paxlovid available for free and is launching an effort to double the supply, getting the pills into 20,000 more pharmacies over the coming weeks. If there were ever a drug to ask your doctor for, Paxlovid would be that drug. It reduces the risk of COVID hospitalization and death by 89% in high-risk adult patients and is already authorized for people 12 and over who are considered high-risk, often with underlying conditions like obesity, hypertension, diabetes, and asthma. But it must be taken within five days of symptoms, often igniting a race to find a pharmacy that actually has it in stock. <laughs> and as you can see, the cough is still working its way out. Still there. It's a scramble. Gabe Rice knows all too well. Have you noticed uh, its impact? Yeah, after a couple of days, I definitely was feeling better, um, feeling less fatigued. Um, coughing less, less congested. Another key tool in a return to normalcy, the antiviral drug remdesivir, which the FDA just approved to treat children as young as 28 days old with COVID. At a time when more than half of all Americans, including three out of four children, have now survived a case of COVID. Nationwide, COVID cases are up 22% over the last week and 45% over the last two weeks. Still, COVID deaths down over that same period, falling 13% over the last week and 37% the last two weeks. Well, Ben, the vice president tested positive this morning after arriving to start her day at the West Wing. We should note she is vaccinated and boosted, but COVID was already at the top of the White House's agenda today with the rollout of a new plan to make a powerful anti-COVID drug widely available on pharmacy shelves. Mololangi, thank you. Dr. Julie Morita joins me now. She is the executive vice president of the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, as well as a member of the advisory committee to the director of the CDC. She also served on President Biden's COVID transition team. Um, so, Dr. Morita, as we heard, the antiviral drug Paxlovid is meant for high risk patients. How important is it to make this drug more widely available and how vulnerable are these high risk patients right now in this stage of the pandemic? Yeah, thanks for having me tonight, Ben. I mean, this is really welcome news to hear that Paxlovid is available or will be more available more broadly. It is so incredibly effective. The data really support how effective it is in, in terms of preventing hospitalizations and death. And we really need to get it into the hands of people who are higher risk. We know that high-risk individuals who are elderly or younger people who have underlying health conditions really can end up very seriously ill and in the hospital. And so having Paxlovid available broadly is really a wonderful thing. We, we heard Mola report that the FDA has approved remdesivir. That's another antiviral drug for kids under 12. Yet we still don't know, uh, we still don't have a vaccine rather for children under five. How big of a problem is that? And when could a COVID shot finally be available for that age group? Well, it's great to see that there are medications that are available for treatment for children. At the same hand, we also want to make sure that there's vaccines available for our children that are younger than five. They've been waiting a long, long time, and that we'd love for them to be equally protected. So we understand that I understand that the FDA is going to be considering both the Moderna vaccine and Pfizer vaccines in the near future, and hopefully we'll have those tools available soon so that we can protect our youngest children. Yeah, I know there's a lot of parents uh, desperate for that to happen. Um, the CDC says nearly 60 percent of Americans have been infected with coronavirus at least once. Uh, early on in the pandemic, we talked about this issue of herd immunity. Is that something that is still possible or does the virus keep mutating so that's not really something we're working towards? 
Yeah, I think with the study that the CDC released showed that there's uh, immune immune levels or antibody levels in people about 60% of adults and over 70% of children have immunity. But that doesn't mean that we have to come let our guard down. We really do need to continue to vaccinate because we know that vaccines actually provide more broad, more robust protection. So people who haven't been act vaccinated should still get vaccinated. And we still need to be careful. We can see that cases are still on the rise. And though hospitalizations and deaths aren't increasing, we still need to be careful and to really do everything we can to prevent transmission and spread of disease. Yeah, that's good advice. And finally, Vice President Harris tested positive for COVID. She has been vaccinated and she's gotten two booster shots. Um, so when would it be safe for her to be around people again? And especially, obviously, we're mostly talking about the president here. Right, so I think there's different recommendations that are available for people who ha have become sick with COVID. And so monitoring their symptoms to make sure they have no, they'll no longer have symptoms. And then also then looking at them over the period of time to see if they continue to have problems or are likely to spread. So within five, five to 10 days post infection, she should be considered safe to actually be around other people. Uh, it, to me, this is just an important reminder that the pandemic is not over, that we still need to be careful. People still need to take precautions, get vaccinated, seek care if they are, have symptoms, and, and really look out for those people who are more likely to get seriously ill. Yeah, as much as we'd all like it to be over, it's not. It's a good reminder. Dr. Julie Morita, thank you so much. Thank you.